Hello and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. A new campaign opposing Scotland's controversial named person scheme was launched this week. The No to Name Persons campaign began at a conference in Edinburgh and is backed by the Christian Institute. It is focused on opposing plans to assign a state-appointed named person to every child in Scotland by 2016. The launch featured talks and discussions from academics, doctors and concerned parents. Mother of five, Anne Cannon, who appeared on a panel at the conference, said the named person scheme could cause distrust between parents and health visitors or teachers. My concerns are that because there will be a responsibility upon people within our society, principally teachers in our case, to be responsible for the children, there is a greater pressure on them to act upon information that might come their way, and innocuous information, comments that a parent might actually make to a teacher just in, in everyday conversation. So I think it may well put parents on their guard, unwilling to share information which might be in the best interests of their children because they're not actually sure how that might be used against them. MSP Liz Smith spoke at the launch about how the scheme could redirect resources away from vulnerable children. The very children that we should be wanting to help are our most vulnerable. And therefore, by definition, to insist that this policy becomes universal means that you will be diverting attention and resources away from our most vulnerable. So that in itself, I think, is a point, and it's a point that's been put uh, very clearly by a lot of our local authorities who feel uh, very concerned about how they will be able to both fund and staff this. The Christian Institute plans to challenge the named person plans in the courts through a judicial review later this year. A new report shows that almost 500 abortions for babies diagnosed with Down syndrome have not been included in official Department of Health figures. According to the statistics, the department listed 496 abortions in England and Wales in 2012, while the National Downs Register, which monitors each case of the genetic condition, had records for 994. The report shows doctors have been breaking the law because under the Abortion Act, an official form must be properly completed and then sent to the chief medical officer. Conservative MP Fiona Bruce said she was concerned by the report. She commented, Worryingly, the department appears to have made no attempt to see that the law is properly enforced. The Pro-Life Alliance said, We oppose abortion on any grounds but are particularly shocked by the discrepancies revealed in this Department of Health analysis. And Professor Joan Morris, who directs the National Downs Register, said, It has been very frustrating that people could pick up the official figures from the Department of Health, yet we all knew they were so inaccurate. Primary school children should have compulsory sex education, a group of campaigners claim. At the moment, secondary schools must teach the subject, but it is up to individual primary schools to decide for themselves. In a letter to The Guardian, campaigners including members of the Sex Education Forum, the chief executive of the PSHE Association and Stonewall's head of education said that should change. They wrote, Statutory sex and relationships education must apply to all schools, including primary schools and academies. Teaching must be proactive in promoting gender and LGBT equality. However, at the beginning of this year, the House of Lords rejected an attempt to make sex education compulsory for primary school children. At the time, Conservative peer Baroness Knight commented that what concerns me is that there seems to be no understanding that there is a time in a child's life when it is not a very good idea to talk about sex. A homeschooling network in Northern Ireland has warned that new plans to regulate and monitor home educators are deeply alarming and intrusive. Education boards in the province have proposed a draft policy which would give government officials power to access homes and question children about their parents' teaching. Maria Handley, speaking for Home Education Northern Ireland, said the plans have no basis under current laws. The proposals are alarming and intrusive, representing a serious assault on parental choice and introducing a fundamental change to the relationship between parents and the governing authorities. Under national and international law, it is accepted that parents are the most appropriate judge for their child's interests. These plans cut across the rights of parents to educate their children in the way they think is best. 
The Northern Ireland proposals are similar to controversial plans from Westminster in 2010, which threatened to restrict homeschooling in England. The proposals were dropped before the last general election. Paralympic star Baroness Tanny Gray Thompson says disabled people and the elderly could feel pressure to kill themselves if assisted suicide is introduced. The peer, who has previously spoken out against the issue, said many disabled people strongly oppose legalising assisted suicide. She made the comments in a letter to the Daily Telegraph alongside the leaders of disability charities Scope and Disability Rights UK. They highlighted the effects that a change in the law could have. We are deeply concerned that a change in the law will lead to disabled people and other vulnerable people, including the elderly, feeling pressure to end their lives. The campaign to legalise assisted suicide reinforces deep-seated beliefs that the lives of terminally ill and disabled people are not worth as much as other people's. The comments come as bills to bring in assisted suicide are being considered in both the Scottish and Westminster parliaments. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.